Good afternoon and welcome to St. Thomas University Summer Convocation 2021. I'm Dr. Kim Fenwick, Vice President, Academic and Research, and will be the convener for this afternoon's ceremony. My role will be to introduce each segment of Convocation, some of which are in person and others that have been pre-recorded. I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which St. Thomas University is located is the traditional territory of the Wallistiqui, or Maliseet, whose ancestors, along with the Mi'kmaq and Passamaquoddy nations, signed treaties of peace and friendship with the British Crown in the 1700s. I'm pleased to introduce our platform guests here in Kinsella Auditorium this afternoon. St. Thomas University Chancellor, the Honorable Graydon Nicholas, President and Vice Chancellor, Don Russell, and Dr. Jennifer Russell, New Brunswick's Chief Medical Officer of Health and our guest speaker this afternoon. And we are joined online by faculty, staff, students, and most importantly, our graduates and their families and supporters watching from across Canada and around the world. To begin, our campus cha chaplain, Father Peter Melanson, will deliver the invocation, and our elder in residence, Mi'kma'an, will bring a traditional welcome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God, our loving Father, we give you thanks for all that you have bestowed upon these convocating students during their time here at St. Thomas University. You have blessed them with knowledge, enriched their lives through true friendships, and strengthened the perseverance which has brought them to this day. We pray that as they go forward, they may, with your continued help, make use of what has been entrusted to them. May they be filled with a desire for justice, a continued thirst for wisdom, and a zeal for making our world a place of greater love. May they know themselves always as blessed, sent forth, and profoundly loved by you. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Gelok mi ma juahan, mi wel gid no mahami gel dan deligan muksig, mi ma juahan dan delik saluksig. So in my mother tongue, I've uh, shared uh, how uh, to acknowledge life has been good and uh, an acknowledging uh, thanksgiving to our sacred mother earth for the unconditional love that she's provided and continually provide to all of us. Uh, today is a, a, won uh, a wonderful celebration in honoring all of you today for your achievements and your um, uh, graduation and so I would like to acknowledge all, all of you. Uh, many congratulations and sending you off in good thoughts as you move forward out into the world and that your, all your dreams manifest in when, when you first arrived here at St. Thomas University, uh, that you fulfill those dreams and wishes. Malalin, thank you. Thank you, Father Melanson and Elder in Residence Big Mahan. I would now ask St. Thomas University President and Vice Chancellor Don Russell to come forward and address the convocation. Your Honor, Graydon Nicholas, Mr. Forrestal, Dr. Russell, pleasure to have you here, and I do want to acknowledge and thank you for guiding the province of New Brunswick through the pandemic with a firm hand, but also with a great deal of grace and compassion. Uh, we really appreciate uh, all your work, and pleased to have you here today. 
platform guests, um, faculty and staff, members of the graduating class of 2021, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to welcome you to our summer convocation. As pre a prof a president and a professor who taught for many years, one of my greatest pleasures is witnessing the success of our students and the conferral of degrees upon them at graduation. This afternoon, we have 107 graduates, one graduate from the Bachelor of Applied Arts program, 29 graduates from our Bachelor of Arts program, and 83 Bachelor of Education graduates. For all of us, this year has been a year like no other, one in which the pandemic and the wise advice from public health resulted in the online delivery of courses with very few students on campus and little opportunity for the usual extracurricular athletic events or the lively theatrical and musical events and the small gatherings of friends that we usually enjoy. But despite the challenges, you, the members of the graduating class of 2021, have persevered and have succeeded in completing your degree. This is no small accomplishment at the best of times, but in the current context, it is truly a cause for celebration. I expect that it won't surprise many of you to learn that as president, I do love to boast about the many successes of our students. And there's certainly much to be proud of, from our students' outstanding record of uh, community service to the impressive record of our graduates in attracting the best scholarships available to pursue graduate studies and professional degrees, and the many successes of our MOOC court teams nationally and internationally. And when our students compete nationally or internationally, they discover that St. Thomas provides them with a world-class education, with an education that prepares them not only to compete against students from the universities widely regarded as the best in the world, but also to win. However, what makes us most proud is that our students become engaged citizens who are involved in their communities. The recent National Baccalaureate Survey on Graduate Outcomes revealed that St. Thomas graduates have significantly greater engagement than their peers nationally with civic issues, as well as with broader issues such as environmental sustainability and social diversity. Our graduates are more likely than their peers across the country to support community causes and social justice and human rights concerns. Now, it's common for university presidents to use convocation as an opportunity to call attention to the successes of their faculty. However, this year, I want to take this opportunity to publicly thank our faculty for their tremendous efforts and the countless hours of work they devoted to the successful transition of their courses to an online delivery format. I want to thank them also for their continued success in delivering the kind of education we promise our students, an education which teaches them to think critically, creatively, and independently, and to communicate well, both orally and in writing. Now, while we all recognize the shortcomings of many external ranking systems, it is heartening to know that when student voices are heard, Stu continues to perform exceptionally well. For example, in those issues of McLean's magazines in which it published a section called Students Speak Out, the feedback from our graduates resulted in St. Thomas University being ranked number one in Canada on the Writing Ability Indicator and number two in Canada for helping them to develop strong critical thinking and problem solving skills. These tremendously positive results are noteworthy because they are in areas that are at the heart of what we do and value as a liberal arts institution. They are in areas on which we have chosen to focus and excel and in the form of direct feedback from our graduates. They also demonstrate the value of the collective dedication, hard work, and fine teaching of our faculty, and also the appreciation of our graduates for the contribution that faculty make to their development and success. Now, a little more than 11 months ago, those of you who are graduating today with a Bachelor of Education degree began your studies to become professional educators. You worked very hard, I know, to complete 60 credits in just 11 months with coursework done virtually on Zoom, and you were in schools for your field placements, applying your newfound skills in classrooms around the province. 
I understand that you also had virtual meetings with university supervisors who provided virtual support. As teachers, you will be lifelong learners, working to stay current on developments in your areas of expertise, in curriculum, and in pedagogy. I know that you understand your new profession is prof emotionally, mentally, and physically demanding. Teaching is hard work, more than uh, most outside the profession fully appreciate. In your classroom, you will work with children and youth with a range of intellectual abilities. They will be from diverse socioeconomic, ethnic, and cultural backgrounds. They will each need your attention and support. Meeting their diverse needs can be a source of stress. But teaching also offers tremendous rewards and none more important than the opportunity to guide, to mentor, and inspire young people to make a difference in their lives. And I think if most of us reflect upon it, we can think of one teacher who did that for us. Teaching is a tremendous gift to our society. Our country and our world desperately need the kind of teachers that you have been educated to be. And after today, each of you will have the opportunity to shape the world one student at a time. For those of you graduating today with your Bachelor of Arts degree, this convocation marks the completion of the journey you began when you arrived at St. Thomas. For us, it's an opportunity to recognize your achievements and to welcome you formally along with our Bachelor of Education graduates as members of our Stu alumni family. Many years ago, I completed a similar journey at St. Thomas. That journey was one in which I forged friendships, which I can now say have lasted a lifetime and was given an educational foundation that prepared me well for the challenges and opportunities that life later presented. I hope that in the future, you will feel the same fondness and gratitude I feel for our small but mighty university. Today is the beginning of a new chapter in your lives, a time to celebrate your accomplishment, to consider the future, but also to reflect upon the assistance and support that you've received. Most of us accomplish little in life without help or support from others. And I know that you, our graduates, are grateful for the encouragement, the understanding, and the support that you've received from family members and friends who've helped you achieve what you have today. When those of you who are graduating with your Bachelor of Arts came to us a few years ago, many of you came from different places and with diverse backgrounds, perhaps worried whether you'd fit in, whether this was the right choice for you. But I know that you have found your way you cut your own path, and I expect that many of you have also found some soulmates. As you graduate, I hope that you will approach the future with confidence and determination. The current economic conditions and social context are such that the contribution of the liberal arts to the workplace are sometimes undervalued. Critics accuse the liberal arts, the humanities, and the social sciences of lacking cultural or economic relevance. But let me tell you that the evidence shows otherwise. A recent Maritime Provinces Higher Education Graduate Outcomes Survey showed that five years after graduation, 95% of humanities and social science graduates are employed, 92% in jobs that they are satisfied with, and with an average median salary double what they were earning two years out. And let me just say as well that there has never been better quantification of the value of a liberal arts degree than there is at present. A study by the Royal Bank of Canada called Humans Wanted, How Canadian Youth Can Thrive in the Age of Disruption, was one of the largest labor force data projects ever conducted in Canada. It assessed skills rankings across 300 occupations, and it found increasing demands for skills such as critical thinking, social perceptiveness, active listening, complex problem solving, global cultural awareness, and adaptability. At the time that the report was released, the president of the Royal Bank of Canada, David McKay, talked about the demand for liberal arts graduates. And at a meeting of Canadian university presidents in Toronto, he noted that in business, we need a lot more of those soft skills that universities were traditionally good at 
and which a liberal arts education provides. The value of a liberal arts education is worth both the private and public investment, engaged citizens, workforce development, and a strong society. Today is a celebration for you, our graduates, but you may also be asking yourselves, what's next? In Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, there's a passage where Alice asks the Cheshire Cat, would you tell me which way I ought to go from here? I expect that many of our graduates are asking the same question today. The Cheshire Cat's simple answer was, that depends a good deal on where you want to go. A simple answer, but full of wisdom. It's natural to worry about the future, but don't just worry, worry. create it for yourself. You determine the direction you're going to take. Like Stu graduates who have gone before you, you will eventually find your way to an exciting and fulfilling future. For more than 100 years, St. Thomas has educated leaders in almost every field of endeavor. Today you leave us with a degree in hand, but that alone is not enough. Indeed, it never has been. Over time, life teaches us that success in life, however you define it, requires a number of personal qualities, talents and skills, creativity, adaptability, people skills, street smarts, a capacity for hard work, persistence and grit, and a certain zest for life or chutzpah. These are qualities and skills I know you all have, and indeed, they've enabled you to accomplish what you have today. And if you doubt it, look deep and find those qualities in yourself, because combined with the knowledge and skills you've acquired here at St. Thomas, these personal attributes will assist you in creating the future you want for yourself. As a group, those of you graduating today have contributed greatly to the richness and vibrancy, the caring and compassion that characterize our community and to the intellectually and culturally diverse life of our small community. You have done this through your involvement in a wide array of activities. And I want to thank you for that. As you leave the shelter of our small community here at Stu, be bold, be courageous, take risks, and grab the opportunities when they come your way, because they may lead you to a future better than you ever imagined. And remember also how blessed we are in this society and in the world to have a university education. I know you'll make us proud. Keep in touch. Congratulations and best wishes to you all. Thank you, President Russell. I am pleased and honored to introduce our guest speaker for this afternoon's summer convocation. Dr. Jennifer Russell is New Brunswick's Chief Medical Officer of Health. A native of Bathurst, New Brunswick, she earned a Bachelor of Science from the University of New Brunswick and a Doctor of Medicine from Memorial University of Newfoundland before completing the Family Medicine Residency Program at Dalhousie University. Dr. Russell has a wide range of experience in healthcare delivery, and prior to joining public health, she served as a medical officer in the Canadian Armed Forces. Dr. Russell's clinical experience combined with her interests in preventative medicine attracted her to public health and the opportunity to work in population health. She is a member of the Council of Chief Medical Officers of Health and other federal and provincial health councils and committees. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, Dr. Russell has been meeting regularly with Chief Medical Officers of Health across Canada to assess evolving evidence and guidance and over the past 15 months, she has effectively formulated policies and communicated vital public health information to the people of New Brunswick. Before studying medicine, Dr. Russell studied music at Dalhousie University and still plays the piano and saxophone. In, in, in addition, she loves to read, 
hike and spend time with her two children. It's now my pleasure to invite Dr. Russell to come forward and address this afternoon's convocation. Chancellor Graydon Nicholas, President Don Russell, Vice President Dr. Kim Fenwick, and graduates, distinguished guests, members of St. Thomas University faculty and board, thank you very much for inviting me to speak to you on this very special occasion. Graduates, this is your day, a day you have worked so hard to reach, and it's a proud day. It's a day to be proud of yourselves for the achievements, especially those you've worked for during this past year. The COVID-19 pandemic has been challenging for all of us. Lockdowns, isolation, schools, universities, and businesses being closed for months. And then there was online learning, something many of you had to adapt to quickly while adapting to so many other things that COVID-19 brought upon us. And I read an email about some of the challenges that you have overcome uh, and have had to overcome to obtain your Bachelor of Education and your Bachelor of Arts degrees and Applied Arts. So you were flexible, you were adaptable and resilient. You learned to deal with the blue screen on your computers like so many of us did and eye strain and dry eyes became a part of our lives. And then there were Wi-Fi issues and not being together as a group added to the challenges that you overcame. But you all persevered and you all made it. And now you are ready to take all that you have learned, all of your achievements and put them to work in classrooms across, the city, across New Brunswick and beyond. And as well as all of the things that you have ahead of you with the other degrees uh, for people who are graduating today with applied arts and also arts degrees. Um, with respect to uh, the teaching profession, one of my most important mentors in my life actually uh, was a teacher. And my grandmother was a teacher, and, and both my kids, actually, my oldest just graduated from high school, and he's uh, heading towards becoming a teacher, and, and that's what his, his thought process is right now in terms of a career. So I do admire that profession, um, and while I'm not a professional teacher myself, I did teach music for a while uh, at the Canadian Conservatory after my first degree in arts, and it was a great learning experience for me. I had to make sure that I was prepared, and I had to have my lesson plans and, and be on time, and it helped develop my communication skills, something that obviously has become very relevant in my job as Chief Medical Officer of Health for the, for the province. Being able to communicate is a really important uh, thing to be able to do, especially when the messages are truly very important and that we need to share throughout the province this, during this pandemic, sharing with New Brunswickers to keep them up to date, to keep them safe, to keep them informed. This was a key part of my work during the pandemic, um, even before that began. And by learning and honing those skills through my teaching experience, it served me well in my schooling and in my career. And it is important for me to be prepared for the things that my job entails, such as meetings and appointments and media interviews, and much, much more. And those skills came from a lot of the time throughout my arts degree and my teaching experience and, uh, and other experiences. But it is very impressive uh, today that you have done such an incredible job getting through the pandemic in this time. Um, it's something that's been unprecedented, and I think I've heard that word many times in the last uh, 18 months. Um, your degrees will offer you many opportunities. I certainly didn't imagine where my life would end up as I graduated from Dalhousie University with my Bachelor of Arts degree in 1992 had no idea where I'd end up in my life. It's definitely been an amazing journey and a, a huge stepping stone in terms of all the different accomplishments uh, in my life. So it was challenging for me as a university student to find my way in, in terms of studying and becoming independent and learning about many of my favorite subjects, including art and science, and I think I struggled with my decision around what to study. I think in grade 12, I must have lost a lot of sleep and tossed and turned about what I wanted to study and what I wanted to do for a living for the rest of my life, and it was a lot of pressure. Um, but I do understand at the same time that, um, again, you can make a choice at one stage in your life and make other choices later on in life, and they all contribute to whatever it is that you're succeeding at. Um, 
I, and I really appreciate the ability to have studied both science and arts. Uh, I know that in, in past times, classical education included both. Uh, they're so very important for both parts of our brain, but also for our, our souls, I believe, and, and uh, our, our jobs as citizens uh, on this planet. Um, so, but again, being able to study in so many different areas uh, did enrich me as a person. And I do encourage all of you to follow your passions in life. It is so very important, the personal gains that you will make in your life uh, in terms of those rewards. You will be more well-rounded um, and you will be allowed to enjoy various dimensions of your life. And I think that's the other piece around the communications is that the, the more broadly uh, that you've taken an experience of, in, in life, they, they do translate into uh, how you relate to people. And it will help you facing challenges in your life. That diversity is really key as well. Uh, your teaching careers and whatever career paths you choose will be challenging, and that's no surprise to you. And I'm sure that um, you all knew this when you set out on your journey, but you probably weren't anticipating a pandemic to, uh, to, to certainly uh, knock you off your path or challenge you to stay on your path. So there will be long days ahead. I'm sure you know you will be working very hard and making crucial decisions for yourself, for your students, to support your colleagues, uh, other teachers, and members of your team. But I know that work will be fulfilling, and knowing that you are helping to set a path of learning for your students is very rewarding. Your work may be lonely at times, and your work is very important in terms of the decisions that you make. But Again, leaning on others for support, whether it's your coworkers, your friends and families, as you perhaps have done during the pandemic and will continue to do, uh, reaching out for help and guidance when necessary. I know you are more than ready to face this, uh, especially at this time of your lives. You have completed your studies for your work at this time to become teachers and care. Uh, the teachers, the, the work that you're going to be doing as teachers this pandemic will affect your students. Some will be younger and, and they may not have had the same impact and understanding. Some of your students will be older and will still be feeling the effects of the pandemic uh, as different people are affected in different ways and touched by this in, in, in many ways across the globe, whether it's from losing a loved one or struggling with uh, loved ones being in the hospital, et cetera. There were, there were just so many losses that people will continue to be dealing with. So your efforts are to be commended. Our province has worked hard to minimize these impacts that the virus would have on our residents, our families and friends, our colleagues and team members. And it was the efforts of a great team in the government, so many civil servants, healthcare workers, many people in public health, um, just an amazing amount of work, an incredible amount of drive and passion for protecting New Brunswickers and keeping them safe. We all worked together uh, with the communities uh, that helped each other keep each other safe. And we put tough measures in place very early on. Uh, closing borders was no small feat. Um, we really were behaving like an island like New Zealand in terms of trying to protect ourselves and protecting our health care from becoming overwhelmed. And when our case counts began to increase, we acted very quickly to implement measures to keep the cases from spreading. And the decisions we've made have not always been popular. And they weren't always accepted by everyone. And it was what we needed to do to keep the province safe. You will likely experience situations like that as well, where not every decision you make will be popular. Or the suggestions that you make may not always be welcome. And there are times where you, get, you will get pushback on your decisions. But you will have to stand firm on those decisions that you make and move forward. That has what has been helpful with me and my job as the Chief Medical Officer of Health for the province, staying the course, staying on course with a huge team of support uh, moving forward, as well as the entire province of New Brunswick. My job is to do what's best for the public health, and that work is achieved by working as a team to see it through. The work to slow down the spread of the virus and the variants is one of the most important things that I've ever had to face in my professional career. And it's interesting that these things, as a professional, have also impacted us personally on many levels as well. So while I wear different hats, today I'm wearing the Chief Medical Officer of Health hat, but on some days I was wearing a parent hat and mothering my children throughout the pandemic, um, or being a partner, or being a friend, 
or a daughter. So we all have different roles that we play, and none are more important than the other. They all have to be balanced. It was worrying and scary at times as I watched what was happening in other provinces and countries. And I could hear the worry in the voices of my counterparts across the country. Uh, some of you might be sitting watching this from some of those provinces where the case counts were high, hospitalization rates were high, and deaths were numerous from the virus. And while for the most part, I have been the face and the voice for sharing information about the COVID-19 pandemic, I have done my best to convey to New Brunswickers how serious the situation has been. Our work to overcome this pandemic will continue for the unforeseeable future. And with vaccines, this is the, the great part of the story so far in this journey. And it, it has given us hope, so much hope right now when we see the numbers dropping across this country, seeing the number of hospitalizations dropping across this country. This is what we need in terms of the momentum right now to keep us going so that we can return to normal as soon as possible. With each passing day, more and more people in the province are being vaccinated against COVID-19, as well as across the country. And we will get to our phase three of the path to green very soon. And I noticed that St. Thomas happens to have green. I don't know if you can see behind me. You're very well aware that green is in your colors for your university. So please help all of New Brunswick get to the path of green and using that green to motivate you, your students, your family, your friends, your colleagues to get vaccinated. It is really in incredibly important at this point in time, uh, again, so that we can have the most normal existence uh, within this time frame. I want to congratulate you again on your achievement. Wish you well as you move forward in your lives and careers. For the Bachelor of Applied Arts and Arts graduates, you are at the start of a wonderful period of exploration and discovery to find your path in life. And my path in life began with an arts degree. For the Bachelor of Education graduates, the work you will do as a teacher will have a lasting impact on the lives of many, many people. Congratulations once again. Thank you very much, Dr. Russell, for your inspiring address. We now proceed to the central part of our program, the conferral of degrees upon our students. I would ask that the Chancellor please step forward. Chancellor Nicholas, I have the honor of presenting candidates for the degrees Bachelor of Applied Arts, Bachelor of Arts, and Bachelor of Education. I testify that they have completed their requirements for their degree and have been found worthy to have it conferred upon them today. By the authority vested in the office of the Chancellor, by the Charter of St. Thomas University, I, met, I admit set candidates to the degrees of Bachelor of Applied Arts Bachelor of Arts, and Bachelor of Education with all the rights, privileges, and honors pertaining thereto. Thank you, Chancellor Nicholas. We will now present the summer 2021 graduates of our Bachelor of Applied Arts, Bachelor of Arts, and Bachelor of Education programs.
congratulations to all our graduates. It's now my pleasure to introduce the valedictorian for this year's summer convocation. The valedictorian is chosen by the Bachelor of Education graduating class, and this year's valedictorian is Maria Oakes. Chancellor, the Honorable Graydon Nicholas, President and Vice Chancellor Don Russell, Vice President, Academic and Research, Dr. Kim Fenwick, Guest Speaker, Dr. Jennifer Russell, parents, supporters, faculty, staff, and the Class of 2021. Welcome to St. Thomas University's Summer Convocation. I wish to begin by congratulating all graduates on this major accomplishment and milestone in our lives. We deserve to pause and celebrate all the hard work and dedication that culminated in this moment. I am humbled and grateful to have been chosen to deliver the valedictory address for Summer Convocation 2021, just as I am humbled and grateful to have been part of the STU community this past year. If I had to define the STU grad class in one word, it would be resilient. This calls to mind a piece of advice my father would reiterate time and time again. Do not worry about what you cannot control, only focus on what you can control. This year, we have faced many obstacles out of our control through our degree and beyond. Completing a university degree is challenging in and of itself, and the pandemic has completely altered our understanding of education. We have had to adapt to foreign learning environments, whether that was completing our coursework in collaboration with peers and professors, many of whom we have only ever interacted with in the online world, or directing lessons and activities for our students in our field placements from behind a mask and within restrictions we never thought would be part of our lives. These are just a couple examples of the factors that were out of our control that had a major impact on our university experience. We did not let these factors derail us, and I'm confident in saying that this grad class maintained poise and focused on elements within our control. Despite the challenges, we maintained a positive and motivated mindset. By completing a university degree during a global pandemic, we have persevered through adversity and conquered barriers that stood in our way. To quote Maya Angelou, I can be changed by what happens to me, but I refuse to be reduced by it. We have continually demonstrated resiliency, and I believe the challenges we have faced and persevered through have not at all reduced us, but dignified us as educators and graduates, and most importantly, citizens of the world. In an online learning environment, there were many experiences we had that were brand new to us as students accustomed to years and years of in-person learning. These new experiences include hours and hours and hours and a few more hours in front of a screen and the numerous times we have tried to speak in a Zoom class only to realize we were muted. We have gone into more breakout rooms than I can count and I've seen our fair share of technology failures. How many times have we heard, I'm going to keep my camera off because my Wi-Fi is bad or you froze it for a few seconds there, can you repeat that? How many times did we wave goodbye to our professors and classmates at the end of a Zoom call? The answer, every class. Despite the solely online platforms we have been limited to, we have somehow managed to forge friendships, bonds, and a teacher community through the screen. I would have never imagined this was possible, and it takes a very special group of people to make you feel like you are so close together when you are actually far apart. For the Bachelor of Arts graduates in attendance today, I would like to commend you on the completion of your four-year degree. Prior to my education degree, I completed a Bachelor of Arts degree, and I will be forever thankful for the knowledge I gained and lessons learned during those years. My arts degree taught me to always think critically about information I am exposed to, to deeply consider ethical factors in the real life situations I find myself in, and to advocate and fight for social justice. The influence of this degree stretches far beyond the academic realm, and I feel it has better prepared me to be a good citizen of the world. I believe the greatest gift a university degree can give a person is to teach you about yourself and to become a better person in the process. I'm sure you echo these sentiments and you should feel extremely proud and rewarded for completing such an empowering degree. As much as we can dwell on the could haves if this were a non-COVID year, I think it is important to recognize the many positives that came out of this year. We recognize the hard work and dedication from the STU education faculty in all disciplines to completely adapt and revamp their courses to suit online platforms. As students, it was not always easy to learn online, so we are able to recognize how challenging it must have been to teach online. Despite these challenges, I can say without reservation that the faculty put us as their students and pre-service teachers first. 
Even with the disconnected atmosphere due to the online environment, our professors went above and beyond to ensure our success in this program. Throughout the 10-month program, the faculty have become terrific role models and support systems for us. They have inspired us wholeheartedly as we reflect on who we want to be as teachers. Another aspect of this year to be thankful for is our ability to have spent the entirety of our 15-week field placement uninterrupted in New Brunswick classrooms. We were guided by our mentor teachers and were able to apply our skills and abilities to teaching in a classroom setting, gaining that valuable practical experience that will have a lasting impact as we enter the teaching profession. These experiences allowed us to build relationships with staff and students at our respective schools, and by doing so, reminded us why we chose to pursue one of the most rewarding careers. I have learned so many lessons along the way from my fellow teacher candidates, professors, the school staff, and notably, my students. My biggest takeaway from this year and this degree is recognizing just how much we have to learn from others. As teachers, we learn just as much from our students as they will learn from us. Choosing a career in education means much more than reading Shakespeare plays in English classes or explaining that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell in science classes. We are much more than teachers of curriculum, but we are teachers of equity, principles, and values. Thinking back on a conversation I had with my mentor teacher about our role as teachers, he reminded me to always remember the human aspect of teaching. Our students are not just students, they are our fellow human beings. We have to always remember to model kindness, compassion, and respect in our classroom, just as much as we emphasize the importance of solving mathematical problems. I am extremely empowered to know that I'm dedicating my career to working with the young people of today, who are so resilient, smart, and caring. They are eager to learn about the world and change it for the better. By entering our careers with open minds and open hearts, we can be part of this real change. There were definitely many ups and downs along the way, but what road doesn't have potholes in New Brunswick? It is not at all but a conventional school year to say the least, but with green on the horizon and a return to normal in sight, we are finishing our degree and embarking on our careers on an optimistic note. It has always been my dream to be a teacher, and I feel honored to have shared this experience with such an inspiring group of people. I want to wish all of my fellow graduates the very best in the future, and there is no doubt in my mind that this graduating class is equipped to create positive change in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Maria, for your words and representing your graduating class so well. At this afternoon's convocation, we are awarding the University Medal for Academic Excellence in Education to the graduating student with the highest overall standing in the Bachelor of Education program. This medal is made possible through an endowment created by President Emeritus Dr. Daniel O'Brien and his family. The University Medal for Academic Excellence in education is awarded to Lara Whalen. On behalf of myself and the faculty, congratulations to our graduates and our award winner, and thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Mr. Peter Forstel, Chair of St. Thomas University's Board of Governors and a member of the class of 1973, will now offer his concluding remarks. And following Mr. Forstel's remarks, the national anthem will be sung by Andrew Allen from the class of 2021, and our summer convocation will be concluded. Thank you so much for joining us, and good afternoon. Chancellor, the Honorable Graydon Nicholas, President Don Russell, honored guests, and to the graduates and to their families who are viewing this afternoon. On behalf of the Board of Governors of St. Thomas University, I'm pleased to offer congratulations to the class of 2021. This has been a wonderful event, and I'm pleased it took place given such trying times. It is a significant accomplishment that our students were able to work through this pandemic to continue their studies and to earn their academic credentials. To our graduates, you have worked hard and you have persevered. We are very proud of you and we have great hopes as you make your way in the world. Now you were well supported on every step of your journey at St. Thomas. The teaching and scholarship of our faculty provided a high quality education. Our staff created a supportive learning environment 
and the alumni and friends of St. Thomas created and will continue to create many opportunities for each of you. Now, of course, your families, your mothers, your fathers, brothers, sisters, husbands, and wives, your partners, your children, and friends supported you in ways that each of you know. As graduates of St. Thomas University, we know that you will be engaged citizens who have the opportunity to contribute back to your community, whether it is here in New Brunswick, elsewhere in Canada, or somewhere around the world. And we can't wait to see what you decide to do, but we do know that you will make us proud. To our Bachelor of Education graduates, as teachers, you will guide, mentor, and inspire young people, and you will make a real difference in their lives. As all of you, the newest members of the class of 2021, as all of you make your mark in the world, we hope that you carry with you the lessons you learned here at St. Thomas University and that you will keep forever the friendships you forged amongst your Stu family. Now you've been a student here for a brief time, but now like me, like Don Russell and thousands of others, you will forever be an alumnus of St. Thomas University, a Tommy. Congratulations to each and every one of you and best wishes. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command. Carton bras et porte le pays, il se porte la croix. Ton histoire est une épopée des plus brillants exploits. God keep our land. Glorious and free, O oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O oh, Canada, we stand on guard for. Thee.